Hi everyone, I'm Gina and today we are going to be going over how to draw the Hayworth projection of a sugar from a Fisher projection. The first thing you want to do is write out the Fisher projection of the sugar with your carbons numbered. Since the problem didn't specify whether glucose was in the L or D form, I went ahead and wrote it in the D form since that is how they are naturally found. The way to find out if a sugar is in the D or L form is to look at the penultimate carbon or the second to last carbon in the chain. In this case, carbon number five is the penultimate carbon. Next, you look at the position of the hydroxyl group on that penultimate carbon. If the hydroxyl is pointing to the right, it is in the D configuration. And if the hydroxyl is pointing to the left, it'd be in the L configuration. Now that the Fisher projection is drawn and labeled correctly, you want to turn it 90 degrees clockwise on its side so that you can better visualize the cyclizing of the Hayworth ring. So it looks something like this. When forming the Hayworth or cyclic projection, the lone pair on the hydroxyl of the penultimate carbon does a nucleophilic attack on carbon number one. The oxygen that did the nucleophilic attack is now attached to carbon five and carbon number one. So that is the oxygen that's in the ring. Because the nucleophilic attack can happen from either side, this carbon becomes the anomeric carbon. So the hydroxyl on the anomeric carbon or carbon number one can either point up in the beta conformation or down in the alpha conformation. And that's how I tell the difference between the two. Other ways I've heard is that beta are like birds, they're up in the sky, and alpha looks like a fish, which are down in the sea. But whatever works for you. Next, we make the ring. Since the nucleophilic attack included the oxygen in carbons one through five, this is going to be a six-membered ring or a pyran. Next, you want to number the carbons in the ring which follow this template. Here you can see that the oxygen that did the attack is still connected to carbons 1 and carbon 5, much like it is in the Fischer projection. Now you go through carbon by carbon and orient the hydroxyls in the way that they're shown in the Fischer. So starting off with carbon number 1, this is where we take into consideration the alpha or beta configuration. Since it's in the beta conformation, the hydroxyl is going to be pointing up on this carbon. Now I look at carbon number two, and I see that the OH is pointing down. Then I look at carbon number three, I see that the OH is pointing up, so I do the same. I do the same thing with carbon number four, see that the OH is pointing down. And when I look at carbon number five, I see that there's a hydrogen attached and this CH2OH group. Once you're done filling everything in, the sugar is drawn, and you've drawn D-glucopyranose. Now let's draw the alpha anomer of L-fructose. Because the problem specifies L-fructose, I'm going to be sure to draw the Fischer in the L configuration. Here I've drawn the structure of L-fructose, making sure to number all of my carbons. Next, turn the structure on its side. It'll look something like this. In this case, the lone pairs on the hydroxyl of the penultimate carbon attack the second carbon carbonyl. And now we make a furan or a five-membered ring. In the Fischer projection, we can see that the oxygen that did the attack is now connected to the fifth carbon and the second carbon. So we should reflect that when we number our furan. Carbon number two in this case is our anomeric carbon, and we need to look at the problem and see what anomer it's asking for. So in this case, it's looking for the alpha anomer, so the hydroxyl on the second carbon is going to be pointing down. Then, depending on the configuration of the anomeric carbon, we can fill in carbon number one as well. Now we go through the rest of the Fischer projection and label the Hayworth correctly. So looking at carbon number three, our hydroxyl is pointing down. Looking at carbon number four, our hydroxyl is pointing up. And for the fifth carbon, since we're in the L configuration, the CH2OH group typically points downwards. And so now we've drawn alpha l fructofuranose. So for the last question, it asks to draw alpha d galactopyranose. There are a few things that we need to note when looking at the name of a sugar. The alpha tells us the anomeric carbon position. The d tells us the Fischer projection configuration. The sugar is typically mentioned in the first part of that last word. In this case, we'll be looking at galactose. And the last part tells us if it's a five or six membered ring. In this case, it's going to be six membered because it's a pyran. As usual, we're gonna start off by drawing our Fisher projection with the correct configuration and the carbons numbered. So there I drew it out and now I'm gonna turn it on its side. So it'll look something like this. Next, I see that my penultimate carbon hydroxyl is going to do a nucleophilic attack and we're going to form a pyran. 
Next, I'm going to draw out the pyran and number the carbons. Now I'm going to go through each carbon and correctly draw out the structure. Starting off with carbon 1 or the anomeric carbon, the problem tells me that it is in the alpha configuration. Therefore, the hydroxyl is going to point down. For carbon 2, the hydroxyl is pointing down. For carbon 3, the hydroxyl is pointing up. For carbon 4, the hydroxyl is pointing up. And since we're in the D configuration, carbon number 6 is going to be pointing up. And there we have alpha D galactopyranose drawn out. I hope this video cleared some things up and thanks for watching.